The broad scope of comprehensive community development can sometimes create seemingly unlikely partnerships, but ones that have a remarkable local impact and value. That is certainly true of the National Football League, one of LISC's most generous and consistent corporate supporters since 1998. The NFL, through its NFL grassroots program, has invested $30 million to build and restore 225 athletic fields in 50 metropolitan areas around the country. These fields are often the catalyst for the redevelopment of playgrounds, parks, and community green space. They connect to initiatives that promote safer streets, school sports, and neighborhood recreational programs. And they reinforce other investments in nearby housing and economic development. The program has proven to be truly transformative for many of the communities where we work. I want also to acknowledge the contribution of NFL commissioners Paul Tagliabu and Roger Goodell for their many years of service on the LISC National Board. I also want to recognize our hometown Washington Redskins and their owner Dan Snyder, who not only are tremendous supporters of the grassroots program, but who also have renovated an additional 28 high school football fields in the D.C. area through the Redskins Charitable Foundation. Accepting, <laughs> accepting the LISC Lifetime Leadership Award on behalf of the NFL, we're pleased to introduce Dan Snyder, owner of the Washington Redskins. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, first, I'd like to just uh, say congratulations to the other honorees tonight. Uh, congratulations. In 1999, I, I bought the Washington Redskins, and uh, one of the first things I did was spend a lot of time with Paul Tagliabue, the then commissioner. And uh, he really, uh, interesting enough, directed me in, in what they were doing for the communities throughout the 32 uh, club organizations and and what got to me and immediately I formed the Washington Redskins Charitable Foundation was the great work that the National Football League was doing for decades the the work in the communities giving back to not only the communities but the children of those communities and understanding how important it was to be involved from a player perspective from an owner perspective and it, it really got to me it touched my heart it got me involved and uh, I want to really hats off to Joe Brown, who's here tonight, who, who was an inspiration to me to get me involved. Uh, and on behalf of all the 32 clubs uh, and, and everything we do and try to give back as best we can, we really believe so much that it's not only the game on the field, but it's the game off the field. It's the involvement that we have in the communities, with the children, with the actual uh, uh, communities themselves that is most important above and beyond and more important than us. And uh, I just want to say thank you. It's really an honor on behalf of the National Football League and all the owners and, and thank you so much for having us tonight. Thank you. I just suggested to Dan if he ever needs a quarterback. <laughs> he didn't seem very interested. <laughs> I don't know. It seemed natural to me. Any of it. Let me now turn to our next and, and, and very important honorary recipient. Over the years, LISC has benefited enormously from financial support and creativity of many private foundations nationally and locally, and we are extremely grateful to all of them. One that absolutely stands out is having provided LISC with the greatest financial support over the longest period of time, and as being a supporter of LISC from the very beginning, is the John D. and Catherine I. MacArthur Foundation. MacArthur Foundation has provided more than $83 million 
to grants to list for our national program, for our projects, and our operations, both, as I just said a moment ago, nationally, and also most particularly for Chicago. But the impact of the MacArthur Foundation has gone far beyond its financial support. MacArthur has been a very active partner in the genesis of the Building Sustainable Communities Program. In this respect, the MacArthur Foundation first helped conceive of the program and then helped fund its genesis in Chicago, which then became the model for rolling the same program out to the rest of the country, again with the support of the MacArthur Foundation. In all of this, MacArthur did what leading foundations do so very well. It took a chance on an untested but promising idea. It shared a vision of what neighborhoods could become with good schools, safe parks, commercial corridors, good jobs, and then it helped make that vision a reality. In addition, MacArthur has been a policy leader on critical issues, and MacArthur has organized innovative coalitions and supported the programs and projects of many community nonprofits. With great thanks for all that she and her staff have done, I would like to ask Julia Stash to come to the podium. Julia is the Vice President for Programs at the MacArthur Foundation, and she will accept the award on behalf of everyone at that very wonderful foundation. You have been a, a leader, a partner, and a friend, and we are deeply grateful. We thank you. I'm very pleased on behalf of the MacArthur Foundation for this important acknowledgement. But I think that the honor really belongs to LISC. It's a foundation's highest aspiration that its money matters. LISC makes sure that our money matters. LISC is a superb steward of our resources and those of other foundations and other supporters. Every day, in every way, we're grateful to see what LISC is doing in Chicago around the country, making money matter. Thank you so much. Our last award of the evening is indeed a very special one because it is in many ways the most personal to all of us at LISC. Lisa Cashin arrived at LISC in 1989 looking for a way to put her considerable banking skills to work in the service of a nonprofit organization. For the next 18 years, she served as LISC's chief credit officer, taking on the sometimes thankless task of ensuring that loans to often undercapitalized neighborhood organizations were creditworthy. In short, she had to ask the tough questions and sometimes even say no, a process which earned her a certain nickname that I'll let her tell you about if she desires. <laughs> During her tenure, she oversaw a tenfold increase in our lending program from $15 million to $150 million annually, always with skill, efficiency, and a large dose of good humor. When she stepped down in 2007, we asked her to join the national board as head of the board credit committee, of course. Over the years, Lisa has also managed to interest her husband, Dick, in LISC affairs, and he has acted as an advisor to our New York City program. In addition, the Cashins sponsor an internship program for high school and college students through our New York City program that has so far provided job and training opportunities to 38 Cashin Fellows. And finally, and finally, and I've saved the best for last, several, year, several years ago in an act of extraordinary generosity, the Cashins made what is by far the largest single donation by an individual 
in the history of LISC, a $5 million unrestricted grant. For all of you familiar with nonprofit organizations, you know what an extraordinary gift that was. So to Lisa and Dick Cashin, for all you've contributed to LISC over many years, and with our most sincere thanks and gratitude, we present you with the LISC Lifetime Leadership Award. Well, Dick and I certainly packed the audience tonight, but I'm sure many people in this room are wondering why we're up here amongst all these bold-faced names. Now, one thing that LIS likes to measure is leverage, and we just went off the odometer with leverage tonight for the Cashins. Um, and so the other reason that I may be up here, it may just be fate. After all, we've talked about names a lot tonight, and I'm sorry Peter isn't here, but what's wrong with LISC? My initials are Lisa Smith Cashin. So, you know, I, I think this was, had, had to be done. And Dick loves to say that there are two important things, the two most important things in life are, are two decisions you'll make. And one is who you'll marry, and the second is what you're gonna do. So maybe I'm here because of my excellent judgment. Uh, I married my college sweetheart um, because he's nice to people, waiters, his mother, his sisters, he's generous, he's funny, and we have a good time. Um, so he's a lot of the reason I am here, at the, where the money came from. <laughs> so, however, I also, in 1988-89 made the very deliberate decision I'd been working at banks to find a dream job you know what did I want to do so I did some research I came to this I talked to Paul Grogan I said I think I'm happily married and I can do this job and I joined this LISC and um, it's been a great decision so finally um, I think every at least half the people, maybe three quarters of the people in this room, have also made at least one very good decision to work for LISC. And so I stand up here as your representative. Um, I, we're, we're honored to be here. We share this with, with everyone in the room and uh, have so much pride for this organization. So thank you. I just had to wait and see if he had a spontaneous prize to give somebody, and he doesn't. So uh, let me close by saying that um, societies don't show the world and themselves very much by being generous when times are good. When money's sloshing around and you don't have to be quite as careful, it's easy to be very generous. We may be embarking on a time when we're about to see what we're really made of because you'll be able to tell a lot about us by how we deal with the least able and most powerless members of our community. So we can either make this a time that we're going to be proud of or one that in 30 years we'll write of with shame. I think the people in this room We'll have a lot to say about which story we write. Thank you for having me with you tonight, and good luck in everything you do.